All right, here's a frequency response problem. Uh, so we have a circuit consisting of two resistors and an inductor. Uh, resistor R1 is given as 10, 10 ohms. Resistor R2 is given as 30 ohms. And the inductor is given as 40 millihenry. And the goal is to drive the transfer function, uh, figure out if the circuit acts as a low pass or a high pass filter, uh, figure out what the cutoff frequency is, and then uh, draw the body plot of that whatever transfer function it is that we derive. So let's get started with deriving the transfer function. All right, so here's the circuit. A transfer function, by definition, can be written as the ratio of the phasor voltage out divided by phasor voltage in, V out over V in. So we can write that down. So now in this circuit, if I look at it, I have the resistor, inductor, and another resistor, and I see that they're all in series with each other. So the voltage across R1, which happens to be V out, can be found out by using voltage divider formula. So if I use a voltage divider here, so the voltage out phasor is going to be equal to, voltage out is going to be equal to the resistance or the impedance of this resistor right here divided by the overall sum uh, impedances uh, seen. So uh, basically we can say V out is R1 divided by R1 plus R2 plus the impedance of L is J omega L. So we have J omega L right here times V in so that V in is getting divided uh, across R1 and R2. So now from here, if I bring V in on to the left hand side, I get V out over V in as R1 divided by R1 plus R2 plus J omega L. And if I fill in the value of R1, R2, and L, which is 40 millihenry, so 40 times 10 to the power of minus 3, that's the milli part, uh, then this is what I get. So I get V out over V in is 10 divided by 40. So that's a total real impedance from coming from the resistor, R1 and R2, so that's 40. The reactance is coming from the inductor only, so 40 millihenry right here. So that's my uh, overall transfer function. I could leave it as this, or just to simplify the task, what I'm going to do is try to divide this uh, denominator by 40, so I can have uh, V out equals Vn is 10 over 40, so I'm dividing both the numerator and denominator by 40. So 10 over 40 divided by 40 over 40 plus just J omega L divided by 40. So what this leads to is a transfer function of 0.25 divided by 1 plus j omega 1000. Okay. So the reason I did this, I mean I could have left it at this, the reason I did this was later on when we do a Bode plot, uh, there's uh, a standard 1 over 1 plus j omega over k type function uh, that we'll be using to help us uh, with the Bode plot. So that's why I uh, simplified it further. Or you could just leave it like this. So here's our transfer function. So the next step was to figure out whether if this circuit, or if based on this transfer function, whether this circuit was a low pass filter or a high pass filter. Now, in the transfer function, okay, so the way, the way we can do this is we can basically set values for the frequency and see what the magnitude edge comes out to be for different frequencies. So if this is the transfer function right here, the magnitude is given as 0 0.25 divided by, now the real part, squared plus the imaginary part squared and the square root of that. So this is what we have uh, in terms of the magnitude uh, of the transfer function. Now let's set omega close to a zero, right? In other words, let's say that omega is getting close to a zero, that's lower frequency. Let's find out what happens. So if I plug in omega equals zero, this is what I get. So uh, the magnitude is equal to 0.25 divided by square root of 1 plus 0 divided by 1,000. Well, anything 0 divided by anything is absolutely 0. So what I'm left with here is at low frequencies, I end up with a magnitude of the transfer function as 0.25. Now, when we'll do the same thing now, but with a high frequency. So let's say omega gets close to infinity. What happens at high frequencies? Let's plug omega uh, equals infinity in that expression. So here I plugged in, in this expression right here, I put in omega equals infinity, so that's what we have. Infinity divided by, well, infinity square, that's a really large number. Really large number plus one is, of course, the infinity square itself. And take the square root of that, and that's approximately equal to infinity, right? So this super large number dominates the, uh, the denominator part. 
So if I have a small number divided by really, 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 really large number like infinity, then what do I end up is a very, very small number close to zero. So what we find is that as the frequency starts to go towards a high frequency value, the overall transfer function magnitude tends to go towards zero. So at low frequencies, we are seeing certain frequencies pass. High frequency, we're seeing frequencies not pass. So this circuit works more as a low pass filter. Now, if we have a low pass filter, well, what exactly is the cutoff frequency? Now, if you recall, so here's my transfer function, here's the magnitude. If you recall, the cutoff frequency is basically the frequency at which the overall gain, uh, also called the magnitude of the transfer function, that the overall gain is 1 over square root of 2 of the maximum value of that transfer function. Okay, Maximum value of the transfer function. Well, What's the maximum value of this transfer function? Well, this transfer function's magnitude becomes highest if the denominator is basically one, right? Denominator is basically one, then this becomes a really uh, uh, highest number. So if I plug in uh, omega equals zero, I get the maximum value of this transfer function right here. So my, my maximum transfer function is given uh, as 0.25. So cutoff frequency is when I reach 1 over square root of 0.25. So basically when I reach 0 0.1768, right? So so by definition, so using this definition right here, if I replace omega with cutoff frequency omega c, then my left-hand side, the value of the magnitude, then becomes 0 0.1768 as I saw here. Now, so if I square both sides, I get rid of this square root in order to square the both sides. So let's do that. So I get 0.1768 squared leads me to 0 0.0312 uh, and 0.25 squared leads me to 0 0.0625 uh, and then a 1 plus omega c over 100 squared. So I've gotten. So now let's cross multiply because we want to find out what omega c is. So if I cross multiply, I end up with uh, basically 0 0.0312 plus 0 0.0312 times this component right here equals 0 0.0625 and further simplification in algebra I basically end up with omega c 100 whole square is equal to 1. So omega c square then is 1000 square in other words omega c is basically 1000 radians per second now that's the cutoff frequency so we found out the transfer function we found out that based on that transfer function, this sum for circuit is working as a low pass filter. And we found out that it, just now, we just found out that the cutoff frequency is 1000 radians per second. In other words, frequencies at 1000 radians per second or below are passed uh, towards the output. Whereas as the frequencies increase beyond 1000 radians per second, it's quickly going to deteriorate and the signal is going to go towards uh, basically zero. Okay, that's what the transfer function uh, says. So here's the cutoff frequency. Now the final thing is we want to draw the body plot of the transfer function. So here's the transfer function. Now to do the body plot, we have a number of approaches we can do. In this particular uh, instance, we are going to try and break this transfer function into smaller transfer functions that we might be familiar with in terms of drawing the body plots. So here I'm going to separate out H in terms of in terms of multiple of two transfer functions, H1 and H2, and I'm going to choose H1 to be 0 0.25, which leads me to H2 to be 1 over 1 plus J omega 1000. Now let's focus on H1. Okay, If I focus on H1, which is 0 0.25, I want to draw the body plot of this guy. So if I draw the body plot of H1 equals 0.25, what I find is that body plot of a constant number basically leads to a uh, straight line with a magnitude. In this particular case, since it's 0.25, I get 20 log base 10 of 0.25, which leads me to negative 12 dB. So I'll get a straight line right through negative 12 dB. Right? If you recall, body plot is the plot of magnitude and phase. The magnitude is plotted in dB, which is 20 log of the uh, ratio. And the uh, x-axis is basically a log scale for uh, frequencies. Right. So we found that the magnitude plot is going to be a straight line across all frequencies. OK, 
okay because uh, 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 and we get minus 12 DB right here for the phase angle well there's only real part right here so that means the phase angle is going to be zero right so 0.25 does not have any J in it so we're in the real imaginary if I think about it if you think about the real and the imaginary axis we're only in the real axis so the angle is going to be zero degrees throughout the frequency range so phase will always be degrees zero degrees since 0.25 is on the real axis right so let's go ahead and uh, next uh, let's let's uh, open up a, a plot so here is my magnitude and phase plot we just found out that the uh, magnitude is at minus 12 dB so let's at minus 12 dB it's going to be a straight line uh, across all frequencies for the phase angle since it's all 0.25 is a real it's going to be at zero degrees for all angles Okay, so we've we've gotten the uh, uh, magnitude and phase angle for H1. Now, how about H2? Now, we said that H2, we broke H into H1 and H2. We found for H1, for H2, I see uh, H2 is 1 over 1 plus J omega over 1000. Okay, uh, I have a video uh, of exactly this function right here, 1 over 1 plus J omega over 1000 how to create a body plot right here so the link is right here uh, it's a part of a, another bigger video where a second time h2 comes out to be this so start watching at, at that particular angle uh, uh, so let's go ahead and based on that video you, you can recap but i'm going to basically summarize uh, how to do this So for step two, so we're going to draw the body plot for H2 equals 1 over 1 plus J omega over 1000, right? So magnitude plot for this. So whenever there's a function that is 1 over 1 plus J omega over some constant, let's say K, what we find is that the, so whatever this K is, so in our case K is 1000. So the magnitude plot is basically going to be a straight line. Let me grab a pen real quick. Uh, pen. So this, the magnitude plot for that is basically going to be like this. Okay, so if there's the axis right here, it's going to be a straight line at zero dB. So whenever there's a one, so whenever there's one over one plus J omega over some constant K, right? So let's call this constant K, okay? In this case, we're gonna have a straight line like this all the way to K, right? So this is omega, by the way, uh, in the x-axis. And the y-axis is, of course, the magnitude in dB, right? Uh, so it's going to be a straight line at 0 dB. After k, it's going to de start descending across frequencies at the rate of negative 20. So this is going to descend down at minus 20 dB per decade, right? So per decade. That's the uh, that's the slope of this line. So that's the kind of plot we're going to see. So in this case, since k is 1,000, Magnitude to plot will be a straight line at 0 dB until 1000. So that's 1000. And then it's going to start declining with a slope of uh, minus 20 dB. Right? For in, in terms of the angle, let me draw, uh, get a different ink color. So for the angle, now if, you, if I say this is the angle plot, so if I call this the phase, or the, let me call this the phase angle, now if I plot the angle, what happens is for a function with 1 over 1 plus j omega over k, the angle is zero degrees all the way to a decade before k. So in other words, k over 10, k, uh, k over 100 in this case. Sorry, in this case, that's k, so that's k over 10. And then at it'll be 40 minus 45 degrees at k. And then further it goes down, and if you look at 10k, frequency you eventually get to 10k and then it becomes uh, a flat minus 90 degrees so it gets to minus 90 degrees at 10k right so that's what the phase angle looks like and you can you can look at this video right here that i have uh, posted before uh, and see how uh, all of this is derived okay so the phase angle is going to basically look like a uh, straight line down and then a straight line again okay so let's draw that all right, so here it is, 0 dB, I'm at 10 to the power 3, so that's 1,000. So I'm straight line up to there, and then from there, I'm going to decrease, so that's that's a decade, right? So that's a decade. So that is minus 20 dB drop. So 
at two decades from that, I have minus 40 dB. So here's my magnitude plot for H2. Now the phase angle, again, I said was zero right here up to this point because that's 100. So that's what we see. Okay. Now we have H1, we have H2. So let's go back. So let's, in the same plot, I'm going to draw both H1 and H2. Now what we really want is H. Since H was created by multiplication of two transfer function, H1 and H2, basically in the log domain, multiplication uh, is basically when you do the log, basically you end up adding them. So that's the, that's the advantage that we're taking uh, here by breaking down a larger transfer function into smaller transfer functions. So H1 was this red line. That's the magnitude and that's the angle. H2 was this green line. Now what we want is the sum of this. So let's look at this. So if I add 0, minus 12, so basically minus 12, right? So right up to this point, the sum of these two plots is going to be minus 12. After this point, I'm going to start dropping down right from starting at this point like this. I'm going to start dropping down at the rate of minus 20 dB per decade because this gray line is flat and the green line is dropping at that rate. So the overall, if I was to draw it, what I would get is a straight line right up to that, and then I drop. So that's that blue line that you see, the dashed blue line is the overall body plot for magnitude plot for H. Now in terms of the angle again, we, angles also add up when you uh, multiply phasors. So uh, here it is, zero degrees and zero degrees add up to zero degrees right here. Well, the red line is zero degrees, so basically what, what you end up is zero degree plus the green line is basically the green line. So if I was drawing the phase angle for H, it basically follows the green line, and that is the overall body plot uh, for H. So in this problem, we're asked to figure out the transfer function. We're asked to find out if it was a low-pass or a high-pass filter, and we found out that that was a low-pass filter. We were asked to find out if the cutoff frequency, what the cutoff frequency was, and we found out that the cutoff frequency was 1,000 radians per second. And then we were asked to create a body plot, which we did by adding two separate body plots of smaller transfer functions.